I'm believing everyone in this room is going to rise up as a mighty warrior for Christ from this moment on. We have a destination. And we are inexorable in reaching it for Christ. We can overcome all obstacles to travel for Christ to these souls. Number three, the word go in the Greek means to die. As we discussed, we must die to sin, self, Satan, society. Romans 6.11 declares, therefore, to be dead unto sin, but alive unto God through Jesus Christ. Galatians 2.20, Paul said, For I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Life I live, which I live in the flesh, I live by the faith of the Son of God who loved me and gave himself for me. Paul didn't say, I was crucified with Christ, or I will. He said, I am. In Galatians 6.14, he said, By the cross of Christ, by which the world is crucified unto me, and I am in the world. Paul stayed dead to the world. Dead to all that was earthly and alive unto all that was heavenly. That's how we must live. That's how a soldier lives. That's how a soldier can be effective for the country that sets him out. He has a goal, and he lets nothing distract him. But the church has become very distracted. The church has been distracted by comparing themselves with another, which is not wise, the Bible says. The church has been distracted by worldly fashion, worldly fame, worldly wealth, worldly events, worldly recreation. But people, we have a city that whose building and foundation is God, eternal in the heavens. Eternal in the heavens. This life on earth, as Jesus said in Matthew 16, 26, what does it profit you or me to gain all this world which is passing away and lose our souls? Or let the souls of these lost ones go to hell? On the day of judgment, it will be no profit. It will be judgment against us if we live that way. So we must die to everything and live only to Jesus. There's a song that I was taught yesterday. I sang in Malayalam. You're enough. You're more than enough. You're more than enough. Well, isn't he? Isn't he? Isn't he the fullness of, of all things? Isn't he Alpha and Omega? The first and the last? Isn't in his presence fullness of joy? Doesn't he give the peace of God which passes understanding? Isn't he wisdom, sanctification, redemption, and righteousness unto us? If he's all these things, what can the world offer you or offer me? Nothing but deception and damnation. Forsake it, church. Forsake the world. And just live all the way alive to Jesus. Yes. Lastly, it means to live. To live. 2 Corinthians 5, 15 says, Christ died, gave his life for us, that we should henceforth not live to ourselves, live to ourselves, but unto him who died. Yes. We're to live for Christ. Paul said, for me to die is gain, to live is Christ. Yes. That must be our motto. That must be our driving force. To live for Christ and like Christ. So we seek to review. We must go by removing ourselves from all the worldly things. Traveling, dying, living only to Jesus. Look at verse 15 again please. The second step. We must go into all the world. World in the Greek is cosmos. It means the orderly arrangement or decoration of things. It also means moral inhabitants. God is telling us here. We have an obligation to go to all the inhabitants we encounter. Amen. All the inhabitants we encounter. That means not just at a convention, Mission Challenge 2009. That means when you go to the store, when you're in your neighborhood, when you take a walk, when you take your children to school, wherever you are, you and I have an obligation to tell them as we are ambassadors of heaven to stop the rebellion against the God of heaven Turn from the God of this world, Satan, repent, believe, and get on Christ's side. We are ambassadors. We are representatives of a conquering kingdom, and we are members of a conquering army. The Bible says Christ was manifest in 1 John 3, 8, to destroy the works of the devil. Christ came in Hebrews 2, 14, to destroy death, and him that had the power over death, even the devil. Christ is victorious. Christ is won. The Bible says we are more than conquerors who Christ who loved us and shed his blood for us. We're more than conquerors. The Bible says the gates of hell shall not prevail against us. That means all we have to do is be obedient. 
All we have to do is trust. All we have to do is open our mouths. And he says in Psalm 81 verse 10, open thy mouth and I will fill it. All we have to do is trust Jesus. The faithful one. The true and faithful witness in Revelation 3.14. All we have to do is trust him. And fear God. Keep his commandments instead of fearing man. Instead of fearing how people will consider you or act towards you. Fear how God will act towards you. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We must go into all the world, every inhabitant we meet, and tell them. But there's some elements that we must know in that letter A. The Bible says we must know in 1 John 5, 19, that all the world, life, and wickedness. In order to properly preach the world, we must uh, see the world from God's perspective. God does not see the world as people who are serving him. No, there are people who made a choice not to serve him. Now, the Lord has compassion. He wants them to repent and be converted. We must properly understand their state to preach the biblical message to them. Part of the problems that occurred uh, uh, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the modern time is the message that's meant for the saints has been preached to the sinners. When Christ preached in the Gospels, he talked about God's love and salvation to those who had already turned from sin and were following him, his disciples. His message to the world was always the same, repent. Repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Repent and believe the gospel. As if you repent, you shall all likewise perish. But the ones he talked to about the kingdom of God and love, those were those who were already following his disciples. And so what's happened is there's been an improper interpretation of this. And so the, 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 the world who is steeped in trespasses and sins is getting the message meant for the saints. And they're saying, okay, God loves me. Okay, well, I'll just continue in my sin and take his love. And salvation while I get drunk and fornicate and do all these things. And the message the church is supposed to receive that Christ offers you grace, but you must repent, believe, and continue in it. Well, many have been taught, well, it's, a, it's an occasion to lasciviousness, an occasion of the flesh. Just say a prayer and live like the world, and it's okay. We have to live the message and preach the right message to the right people. Well, how can we know? James chapter 4 says, God resisteth the proud and giveth grace unto the humble. God's grace is contingent. God's mercy is conditioned. God's love is conditional. God's salvation is all conditional on how man will respond to God's requirements. God sent Christ to offer salvation to all, but it's based on one choosing to meet his requirement of repentance and faith for them to appropriate or receive the salvation offered. Everything in this world is contingent or conditional. How much more God? But we must know this, live and tell others. If you're telling the sinner, hey, just say a prayer and live however you want, that is further damning and deceiving them. Because the Bible says no unrighteous one will enter the kingdom of God. No fornicator, no adulterer, no idolater, no effeminate, nor abuser of themselves with mankind, no thief, nor covetous, nor drunk, nor reviler, nor extortional, and inherit the kingdom of God. So we tell them it's okay to be that way. As long as you come to church and say a prayer or act morally good, that's not what the Bible says. They must repent. That's another reason why the church has not walked in the full strength of the Holy Ghost. The church has been afraid to preach the gospel as it is. The church has been ashamed of Christ crucified and Christ's message of repentance to the world. Acts 17.30 says, God, in former times, God winked at man's ignorance. But now, God commands every man everywhere to repent. And we must tell them the same thing. If we do, the Holy Ghost will come upon us and anoint us because it's his message. Amen. It's his message.